Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm asking the question, can you play the top tier of the game that I've been playing for like 13 years for free? Now, I should know, because I've played a lot of games of World of Tanks, so much so that in 2018 I decided that I've been playing for so long and I had no idea what the new player experience was like, that I went back and I did it all again. Today I am playing on my Plays for Free account, an account which I never have spent any money on at all. Everything that I have on this account has come through taking part in events and just grinding and sweating inside the game. Uh, I, when you do it over a long period of time, it's not so bad, but I can imagine somebody who just wants to try and progress in the game as quickly as possible right now, that's a bit of a nightmare to try and do free to play. So, Today, I'm going to be playing in the AMX M454, and this is a perfect example of a tank that is about as good as can be from the top tier for playing for free. Because if you use the 120mm on this tank, it actually has incredible penetration on its standard rounds uh, for any vehicle. 270 millimeters of standard AP pen on this gun means that you can challenge most of the plates that you're ever going to meet, meet even in a matchup like this where you're playing against only tier 9 and tier 10 tanks. The other advantages of this gun is that you have better accuracy, so you miss less shots. And if you miss shots, you're not having to pay for wasted shells. And on top of that, you get better gun handling on your turret, which means that, well, when you turn your turret, I should say, which means that you can do things like drop vert stabs and be able to get other things which might give you a little bit of an advantage here and there, as well as better aim time as well, so you can, again, miss less shots and fire less chancy shells. Now, if you are somebody who is able to spam full gold, uh, at tier 10, uh, you know, you're a premium customer with premium tanks, you play them a lot, you've unlocked all the vehicles, you've bought all of them and you've got nothing less to spend your credits on, then you might want to go for something like the, uh, the 130mm on this tank, which used to be by far the best gun. However, now with the nerfs to the, the 130, I do think this 120 is absolutely awesome. So, free to play World of Tanks at tier 10. The post-game stats are really going to be the meat of the matter here. I want you to take a look at the kind of ammunition I'm firing, how careful I'm being with all of my shells, and making sure that I'm, I'm connecting all of those shots. And you guess how much profit we're going to make in this battle by the end of it. So the AMX M454, this thing, for a, a few patches, was just so bonkers OP. And maybe this is a hot take, but I still think it's actually very good, especially with this 120mm. Sure, it's not outrageously OP like it was previously, but as long as you just keep your opponents in front of you, you really can't go wrong with a gun like this. You've got 2,400 base DPM, 0.33 accuracy, 1.8 seconds aim time, and 270 pen on your standard rounds. And if you're privileged enough to be able to electrify the gold rounds, which of course cost four times as much on this vehicle, then you've got 309. Sorry, 315 pen. Although 315 pen is not really that much more when it's APCR compared to the 270 on the standard rounds. Especially when you consider the armor piercing rounds, they normalize five degrees of armor compared to the APCR, which normalize only two degrees. Uh, what is normalization, QB? That's the first question I get when I talk about that. Well, it basically changes the angle of, of where you hit a plate. So let's say you fire and you're hitting a plate like this with your shell. AP will kind of like normalize the shell to make it as if it hit at a, a more flat angle. So it will adjust the angle by five degrees within the calculation for armor piercing rounds. Whereas APCR will only do like two degrees. So they'll do less, which means that it's still more ricocheted. Now, of course, if you're hitting a plate that is not angled by more than two degrees, then there'll be no difference between AP and APCR. Uh, because obviously you can't normalize more than like hitting at a, a perfect angle, right? But when you're shooting at angled surfaces, up to 70, where of course like 70 is going to ricochet anyway, then the AP rounds can kind of like balance out the APCR advantage. Not by as much as you would think, but usually by about like 10 or, or 20 millimeters. So I was really happy that I pushed around the corner, pushed off the Progetto, and my spidey senses were tingling that the Super Conqueror would cross. And that allows us to catch them once out, go for the top of the vehicle, although we ricochet a shell and they managed to put one into us, which I was pretty disappointed about. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna ask this E75 for help as our T124 distracts the Super Conqueror, which is going to allow me to come around to lock their tracks down again. I'm hoping that the E75 is gonna come and back us up. I give them a thumbs up to try and keep them going. And I'm wondering if I should just poke here. I don't really want to lose another 400 hit points, but now that the E75 has, I just wanna try and commit and get rid of this player. But I realize, oh, this is greedy because the BZ-68 has my side. Luckily, this tank's armor is awesome. 
and so we're able to ricochet the shell even from the front even at a funky angle there and our durability device allows us to get our tracks back up quickly and hopefully go after this BZ68 some more and oh there we go that's what you want locking down the tracks of the tier 9 Chinese heavy tank and this game is neck and neck right now now after those shots were up by a, a few thousand hit points but on kills it is five a piece right now although I'm hoping that once we get the super conquer out that we'll be good so so far just a really solid game for this vehicle it's just Amex M454 in its environment keeping your opponents towards in front of you and just trying to hit those shells with this precision based 120 and now that Wargaming have nerfed the super conqueror I definitely feel that this one's in an even better position Wow, that A phase one certainly got a cheeky shot on the side of the turret there. What I was trying to do was get far enough away from the proxy spotting from the Moissian and the Super Conqueror that I was going to sneak in and be able to finish off the Super Conqueror from behind. But considering that the A phase one managed to spot me, and you see the uh, A phase one's name, load the gold. Indeed, buddy, something, um, <laughs> been shouting for like years. But unfortunately, in this video, considering that I'm, I'm trying to show whether it is possible to play free at tier 10, I'm trying not to load the gold, and so far we've, we've managed it, we've just been using those regular rounds. And that's one of the key purposes of this free-to-play account. Now sometimes on my free-to-play account, when I need to, I do spam gold left, right and center. Because it's better to pen gold than it is to not pen gold. Bouncing regular rounds, you're still paying a thousand credits every time you miss. You might as well pay four times as much and actually go into the tank. Although, to be honest, that does require knowledge about how good the enemy's armor is and whether you will need gold to increase your chances of, or even just to have a chance of being able to uh, go into the enemy vehicle. One of the key things that I recommend for all free-to-play players out there is to not get stuck into the mindset that you can't fire some gold rounds and still make profit. It is going to impact your game, but it is far better to fire the gold at that hard-to-break tank to be able to destroy them to then go on and shoot the more squishy tanks or make the flanking play and get the sides of your opponents and use your regular rounds where you will be making profit. The other thing for the free-to-play players out there that I thoroughly recommend is get intuition on your loader. One of the best skills you're ever going to have. It means that not only can you quickly switch out to a gold round if you need to, but you can also manage to switch out the gold rounds to a regular round if for example, the tank gives you, you its side, or you just see that it's a squishy target. And even better, if you manage to uh, switch out to an HE round, not only are you firing cheap shells, but you're firing cheap shells to deal increased damage, going up to 515 on this tank from the 400 alpha damage that you'll have on the standard rounds. So in this situation, the game has slowed down a little bit. There's a Progetto up there. I'm really hoping that the Amex 30 will use some of their hit points. They're on full health towards the west. They could easily manage to cross. The Griller would support them. The two artillery would support them. But oh well, I'm going to have to go after this FV4005 instead. So we're going to fire our first round that is not armor-piercing in this game. And ooh, baby, yeah, 523 right through. And it looks like they fire a high-explosive round into the dirt. I'm going to go forwards, finish off the FV4005, and then start to load AP again. And ooh, this game's starting to look quite spicy. Up to 5,000 damage, and I've still got nearly 1,000 hit points left to play around with. So we're going to start to apply some pressure to the cap. We've obviously got to be careful. The two enemy self-propelled guns aren't spotted right now, and they could be anywhere. But I tell you what, who is spotted? And that is a tasty Progetto. Come to Papa. One right through the side of the Italian tier 10 medium tank, and they are starting to go on the run, although they're kind of floundering around a little bit. Well, Luke, it doesn't look like you were so lucky in this game, buddy. Unfortunately for you, you didn't see that shell coming guess Luke didn't use the force in this case. Rip. As the Amarak blows the head clean off the Progetto 65. The Griller gives a GG in chat and this game is starting to look like more of a formality now. With the head blown clean off the chances of the enemy team to be able to come back into this game. Oh, great shot right through there. AP rounds just doing absolute work on this tank. But talk about doing work. Batchat 15558 manages to put a round into my side. Luckily, Shark dark on the enemy team can't avoid a decent roll and we claim another frag to our name and there we go 7,000 damage dealt five frags here it's about as good of a game as you can possibly have and unless I'm mistaken we didn't fire a single gold round in this game and I think I only bounced one shell and uh, that was off the super conqueror weak point and when you take into account but I also got an ammo rack. That means 
that really I penetrated every shell if you include that the Amarak was double the, uh, the normal 400. We did 734 with the Amarak, meaning that that's kind of like the equivalent of two shells to make up for the bounce that we had on the Super Conqueror. Accordingly, this game was kind of the perfect game from a free-to-play perspective. We didn't fire any gold, we fired and hit all of our shots, and effectively we did as much damage as we had, even if we hadn't ricocheted that shell. So, my question to you is, do you think we made that much profit at tier 10? And the answer is yes. But I hasten to add that even though we made 95,000 credits in this game, we made 95,000 credits because we also completed a daily mission that gave us 50,000 credits. So in actuality, we made 45,974 credits profit in this battle for playing as clean as we possibly could. However, we also have to take into account that I wasn't using any premium consumables in this battle, but I did re I did use a repair kit, which will be 1,500 because I only purchased them at half price. And we also used a med kit, which will be 1,500 because I only used them at half price. So we made 42,000 credits profit. Now, the alarm bells should be sounding when you consider that that was if I was using a premium account. Now, not everyone has the luxury of being able to play enough to have a premium account a lot of the time from taking part in Wargaming's events. And so accordingly, if we didn't run a premium account, we would have made 57,453 credits, of which we spent 20,736 on ammunition. Sorry, resupply the vehicle. We spent 19,470 on ammunition, and then we spent 1,500 on the repair kit, and we spent 1,500 on the med kit, giving us a measly 14,000 credits profit, even for this perfect game at tier 10, with no gold rounds fired, no premium consumables used. And when you consider that this was an exceptional game of World of Tanks at tier 10, no, it is completely impossible to play tier 10 without losing tons of credits. So accordingly, if you're a free-to-play player out there thinking, can you play the top tier of World of Tanks without having to, to pay for a premium account, at least sustainably, no, it is not even close to a possibility. And the reality is, for every hour that you have to play at tier 10, that means going down and kind of playing an hour in your premium vehicles if you are not running a premium account. So for some people, the idea of not being able to play what is meant to be the pinnacle or the apex of World of Tanks, uh, at least for free, is going to be a really big deal. However, you know, tier 10 is definitely not the most fun tier to play, at least in my opinion. I think a lot of players will do better off towards kind of like the 6, 7, 8, or maybe not 8, because 8 is an absolute horror show with plus 0, minus 0, and all of the OP premiums, but tier 9 especially. And all of this is something often that I take for granted. You know, I've got all of the vehicles on my main account. I have a, a like three years worth of premium account paid in advance effectively from doing all of the events and getting all of the loot boxes. And that's why having the, uh, the plays for free account is such a nice dose of reality to realize that the game that I've sweated in uh, for like 13 years it truly isn't a free-to-play title. At least, unless you're willing to put a lot of time into it. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're a strictly free-to-play player, let me know in the comments down below what tier can you play at where you still kind of more or less break even. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.